Hi there, it's Hannah the Artisan Duck and I'm back today with this Peyote pumpkin tutorial. I don't have many Peyote patterns on my channel and I wanted to increase that and with it being nearly Halloween I thought a pumpkin was a fun one to um, make. I do have a brick stitch pumpkin pattern already on my channel um, but this is a completely different shape and I have been doing more Peyote sort of in my own time and I did come up with this pattern here. This is too long to teach on YouTube or via my blog so if you would like to check out this pattern if you are intrigued by a slightly bigger pattern this is available on my Etsy shop and I shall put the link below in the sort of description but if not not to worry so let's get started on our pumpkins for our beading we're going to be working off this pattern and this is available for you to download on my blog so I'll put a link in the description where you can go and get your copy of this and we are working from this little pattern up here. So we're going to start at the top with our green and with all peyote you always pick up the first two rows to begin with. So we're going to start up here with this green and then we're going to pick up these two oranges. This is row one and these two are row two. So I've picked up my beads and my green is sitting between those two orange beads and I'm just going to take them down my thread. This is quite a short piece of thread. You don't need long for these pumpkins because they're not very big at all. Um, this is about 20 inches. You do need to make sure that you can tie your knots at the end. So just make sure you've got a length that you're comfortable working with. And I'm going to leave myself a tail thread because I'm going to use that at the end to add a little loop at the top so I can make my earrings. So that's row one done and now we're ready to move on to the next row. This project looks deceptively simple because actually we have to now increase out our beadwork which I think is a slightly more fiddly um, thing to do in peyote. So our next row are going to be these three oranges here. So I've gone ahead and picked up the first bead of the next row and we don't have anything to sort of anchor it in place. So we're going to have to take our needle back through the last bead on the previous row. And pull through. So as you can see that's now sitting slightly lower which is exactly what we want. I'm going to go ahead now and pick up my next bead and we're going to go through the orange bead because we always jump over a bead and into the next one along. Pull and that bead now should be sitting on top of the green bead. And we've got one more bead to add and as you can see we've got nothing to anchor it onto again. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick up my single bead and take that down the beadwork. And I'm going to take my needle back in through the last bead on the row and pull through. And we need to make sure that that one is also sitting staggered lower down. It's very tricky when we first start these projects because there's not much for me to hold on to. To show you so I'm hoping that's clear. This beadwork will tighten up and sit a lot nicer when we start adding more beads so don't worry about that for a second as long as the beads are roughly facing in the right direction you'll be absolutely fine. We're now in the wrong direction to continue beading off to the side. You can just take your needle through the beadwork and just sort of keep adding on this end if you want to but you know for a bigger project you wouldn't want to do that so I'll show you how to turn around so you're going to go into the next bead along like that now we're going to take a shortcut by going into this green like that and pulling through and you want to pull that thread nice and tight so it disappears between those beads and then we're going to go through sort of that orange at the end again and pull and then we're going to go back through our end bead like that and now we're ready to add the next row so we're increasing off the end again so we've got an orange and then two black beads and another orange on the end so just like before, I've picked up my first bead in the row, which is an orange, and I'm going to take that down my needle. And now we need to secure it in place um, using the bead at the end of the previous row. So I'm just going to take my needle through that bead and 
pull through. Like I say, you might need to just persuade these to sit in the right direction. And now we're ready to continue our beading. So the next bead is a black bead. And we're just going to take the needle into that orange that's sort of sticking down. Pull that into place. There we go. So it's now sort of surrounded by the orange. You can see it's made sure that all these orange, orange beads are sitting much neater. And then we're going to pick up another black bead. And we're going to go into this orange bead at the end. Like so. There we go. And now we need to add the bead at the end. So I've just picked up my bead, I'm going to take it down my needle and thread and I'm going to go back into the bead at the end of the previous row and pull through. Make sure it's sitting right and now I need to turn myself around so we can continue beading. So I'm just going to go through that black bead again and pull. I'm going to jump up to the top into that orange like so. So now I'm just going to go through that orange that's sort of on the previous row and we've, we're not increasing anymore so in order to face the right direction to continue beading. I'm going to take my needle in the last orange in the row, but um, sort of moving in towards the beadwork. So the next row we're doing is just this row here with three orange beads. Let's just go ahead and pick up one of your beads and we're going to take it into the black bead. There, and pull. You see that's filled that gap in and I'm going to take my next bead through the next black bead like that and then I'm going to pick up the last bead in this row and we're going to go through that orange bead at the end and pull. And now we're ready to move on. So we're now ready to add these side pieces and this row it has this orange at the side, we've got two more orange and then the last orange at the end. So to add the next bead on we're just going to pick up a single bead and go straight into that bead that's sort of sticking out on the row below and pull through. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and pick up another bead and we're just going to take our needle into the orange sticking down in the middle and take our third bead in this row and we're just going to fill that gap in there And we've got our last bead in this row, which is the last orange. And we don't have any other beads to attach this onto. So we're going to go back up through the orange bead at the end of the previous row. And take our needle in so it's moving towards our beadwork. And pull through. Like that, we pull it. You're going to see that sitting side by side. And we now need to turn ourselves round so we can do the next row. So I'm going to do that turn again. I'm going to go in through the next bead along and pull. I'm going to take the needle through the orange bead at the bottom and pull. And then I'm going to go up and into that black bead that's just above it. Like that and take through. The biggest difficulty with this project is it's so tiny, it's not much to hold on to. And then I'm going to take my needle through this outer bead again like that. And we're going to go back down into our pumpkin. 
like that and now we're ready for the next row so our next row is just where these three black beads here are for the mouth so I'm just going to go ahead and add those beads I've got my black bead on my needle I'm just going to go ahead and sort of fill in those gaps here's the second one and the last bead in the row like that there we go the first part of the mouth is added so we now need to add this third bead down the side and then we need to add the lower part of the mouth so we're going to go ahead and pick up an orange then we're going to add two blacks and then finish our row with an orange bead so i've just picked up my single orange bead and we're going to take the needle straight to that black bead that's sitting down. I'm now going to pick up my black bead and go into that bead that's sticking down in the middle and pull through. I'm going to add my second black bead. I'm going to go through that one there and pull. And then we're going to add the last bead in this row, which is an orange. And we've got nothing to add it on to, so we're going to take our needle back through the orange at the end of the other row. Just give it a wiggle to get it to sit right. So we now need to turn around, so we're ready to finish off the end. So I'm just going to go through the black, I'm going to go down into the black, and it's just the same that I've done before to turn around. Like that. I'm going to go back into the orange at the top. Make sure that um, thread disappears. And then I'm going to go back through the black and the orange and pull through. And now I'm going to move my way back into that bead and we're ready to continue. So we've only got two more rows to go so we're just going to add these three orange beads. So I've already picked up my bead and we're just going to go ahead and into that black bead. Picked up my second bead, I'm going to go in like that and to finish this row I'm just going to take my needle and add that third bead like that and now I need to turn around again so that I can move back in towards the beadwork to just add the last two beads. So I'm just going to go up through the bead above and pull through. We're going to go in through that black bead and pull. I'm going to go Cross, and then we're just going to work our way back up again. Pull to make that thread disappear, and then I'm going to go back through the black that we started from. We're going to go back into the outer bead, but it's the um, second one up because we need to move back in so I'm going to have to if I wanted to move out you could go through the lower bead but because I want to curve back in towards the beadwork I need to sort of change the direction of the thread a little bit more and now we're going to take the needle in sort of towards the beadwork on the lower bead and I'm now ready just to add those last two beads so I'll just show you the pattern just so you can see what I'm talking about but it's just these two beads right at the bottom there. So I'm exiting out of this orange bead on the end but I need to go in through this next orange along so that I'm in the right position to add those two beads. So just take that through and then pick up your bead and take the needle in through there. 
and then pick up the last bead in this row and you're just going to go ahead and add that on as well and there's your little pumpkin so before I tie my knots I'm going to take my needle off my working thread and I'm just going to pop it on my tail thread so I now want to add another green bead on the top here just to make it look slightly better and then I'm going to add a wire guardian at the very top so that I can add it onto an earring hook so I'm going to take a little bit of a shortcut and I'm just going to take my needle straight up and into that green bead I'm only exiting out this orange sort of along here and you can always see the threads on brick stitch and peyote so it's you know it doesn't look out of place and I'm going to go ahead and pick up one of my green beads so I've got my bead and I'm now going to go back into that other green bead but sort of from the opposite direction to where I'm exiting and pull and that's going to make those beads sit on top of each other like that and I'm going to go through that loop again um, just to make sure it's nice and firm and those beads are sitting really nicely like that and pull like that there we go those beads are sitting nicely now I'm now going to go up the top of that bead to add my wire guardian so if you wanted to you could add an all beaded loop and use that to hang and that's what I will quite often do if your jump rings are tiny enough to go through these beads you could add a jump ring at this point and just hang it from an earring hook or whatever it is you want to do but I'm going to use a wire guardian today and I don't always do this so it's quite nice to do something different so I've got my little wire guardian there I'm just going to take my needle through the bottom and pull and take that down to the beadwork and then I'm going to go make sure that thread does sit in that channel I'm going to take it back through on the other side like that and pull I'm going to go back through the green bead again like that, it's going to secure it in place and then just to be doubly sure that it's nice and secure I'm going to go through those again so back up down on the other side and pull and just make sure that those threads are sitting in that channel and that the tension's um, even so it's not tipping on one side. I'm going to take my needle now back through the green bead. I'm going to go down into the lower green bead like that and now I'm ready to tie the knots and finish my pumpkin off. So I'll just tie one knot with you so you can see how I do it um, and then obviously I'll go off and finish it off camera. So I'm just going to take my needle down into the pumpkin a little bit. I'm just going to move my way through these beads and so I can work my way back into the middle. So I get through there. And we're going to work our way back in. Now to tie the knot you need to find some thread that's not so easy um, to see them in a project this small but there's going to be threads that run up and into these beads and you just have to tie a knot around them so what I like to do is go in between a bead so I'm going to tie a knot on this thread that's going between this outer bead and this orange bead here so I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go down between those beads because I know that the threads running in that direction so by going through the middle I know that I'm sitting on one side and now to make sure I get to the other side of that thread I'm just going to push my needle through on the other side of those beads and pull up and I've left a small loop I don't know if you can just see that there it's just a little loop of my thread and I'm going to pull taken my needle through that loop and I'm just going to pull and I actually felt that sort of tighten the knot and I'm going to go into the next bead along and pull through and I'll repeat that just a few more times it's such a little project you're not going to be able to 
do that mini knots in it and then I'll do the same with my tail thread and then I'm ready to finish my project. So I'm going to pop off, I'm going to finish tying the knots and I shall come back and show you the finished earrings. So there's the finished earrings and I think they are super cute and perfect for if you don't want a big Halloween earring to wear. So don't forget you can go and grab the pattern for that off my blog and the links below and also you know shameless plug if you do fancy having a go at this necklace that will be in my Etsy shop. Until next time thanks for watching.